Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue. I'm the Black Powder Editor for Guns of the Old West Magazine. And today we're back in the shop. And I've had some requests on uh, disassembly of cap and ball revolvers. So, we're going to kind of kill two birds with one stone today. We're going to do disassembly, but we're going to do it in the context of giving this gun a good cleaning. I just had it out on the range and uh, put 30 rounds through it. It's pretty dirty. So, we'll show you how to take it apart. Uh, we'll show you my techniques for cleaning it. Everybody has a different way, but this is what's worked for me for almost 40 years. And then we'll put it back together and put it away. So let's get going. I always seem to misjudge how long these how-to videos are going to go. So we're going to have to break this one into two parts. In this part, we're going to cover disassembling the barrel and the cylinder. Uh, so we'll break the gun into its three main components, which is barrel group, cylinder group, and action and we'll totally disassemble the barrel group and the cylinder group, clean everything up, put them back together. And in part two, we'll take the action apart, clean that all up, and show you how to reassemble the whole gun. Uh, before we take the, uh, the gun apart, and, and we're going to be doing an 1851 Navy revolver. This is a Pieta model here. Uh, basically, all Colt cap and ball revolvers, with the exception of the Patterson, which, which has some real quirks, uh, pretty much disassemble the same way. Some of the earlier walkers uh, the, and the early Dragoon models have a couple of little quirks, but but basically they'll disassemble the same way this gun does. And certainly everything after uh, the second model Dragoon comes apart the same way for Colt. So once you've seen this, you can do an 1860 Army or you can do a 49 pocket pistol or a third model Dragoon. Um, they're, they're all pretty much the same. But the first thing that I think we ought to talk about is screwdrivers uh, and tools in general. You really don't need that much in the way of tools to be able to take apart cap and ball revolvers. For, for disassembly, you really only need to have two basic tool groups. You're going to need a nipple wrench. This one is a Track of the Wolf nipple wrench that's sized for revolvers. And that's important when you, if you're going to take apart the, uh, the gun after firing, you've got to be able to clean the nipples. And you need to have good screwdrivers. And, and these things are really critical for any gun work, but particularly for black powder guns because they have to be disassembled to be cleaned. And if you don't have good screwdrivers, you're going to mess up the screw heads. Uh, these Italian guns do not have the strongest screw heads in the world, and it's very easy to bugger them up with ill-fitting screwdrivers. Now... I use this Brownells Magnetip screwdriver set. It's a gunsmith screwdriver set, and as you can see, it has a lot of different tips. And it even has uh, a torque wrench here for things that have critical torque. Um, this is a great kit. It's a little bit pricey. But these bits and drivers are all sold separately, so you can buy what you need. You can just get what you need to take a Colt apart. And... Uh, that's pretty handy. And there are other gunsmith screwdrivers that you can get as well. This, these from Grace, uh, they're pretty inexpensive. You can say I got this from Mark Colt because it, it happens to fit most of the screws here. This one goes in my small range box. Um, I actually have a small magnet tip set in a case. Uh, really packs up small that goes in my basic range box all the time. So, Anyway, you should you should consider this now. Now the other tool that you may need or may not need is a plastic mallet uh, because Colts are held together by this wedge that goes through the arbor. Now on a lot of them you can thumb press it out but I can see this one's not going to do that so we're going to give it a tap and there it goes, right? Okay, now if a barrel doesn't want to come off if it's tight Put the gun on half cock, drop the loading lever, it's going to come down between two chambers, and you'll cam the barrel group right off. So Colts break down into three main sub-assemblies. You've got the barrel group, which has the loading lever on it. You have the cylinder, which has all the nipples. And then you have the most complex group, which is the frame. And that's where all the action parts are. So let's, let's take these guys one at a time. The barrel group only has really two major parts. 
you've got the barrel itself and you've got the rammer. And they come apart quite easily. Uh, you can disassemble the entire rammer by taking this screw apart. And we can do that in a minute. But if you just want to take it off the frame, there's a screw right here on the barrel itself. And if you pull that out, you can take out the entire rammer. And if you take this screw apart, you can take the, uh, the actual rammer itself off. This is called the loading lever. This is the rammer. And generally we leave the wedge in the barrel. Now what I'm going to do, I've got some paper towels folded up over here. I use a lot of paper towels. Uh, what I'm going to do with this assembly is pretty simple. While we're t doing everything else, I'm just going to rip a corner off of this paper towel and I'm going to put it in the end here. And I'll, I'll just show you. Uh, let, me, let me get some light on this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, this is what the inside of the bore looks like before we clean it. So it's pretty dark, pretty grungy. Uh, been about 30 rounds through this. And it's not doing too bad, but that's not the way we want to leave it. So, I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay, I've plugged up the barrel with a very small piece of paper towel. Now I've got a mixture of ballastol and water. I'm going to shake it up. It's 10 parts water, 1 part ballastol. And I'm going to squirt it in the bore, and I'm going to let that work for a while. And then, I'm just going to spray this entire assembly on the outside. And I'm going to drag this over the side, and I'm going to let it set. And we will just let that work. And while that's working, I'm going to work on the cylinder. So, we've got another paper towel folded up over here. I like to take a paper towel and fold it into this narrow configuration to work on the cylinder. I do this all the time. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the nipples. So you take your nipple wrench, you can see it's slotted, and I'm going to unscrew the nipples, and we'll just do each one of them. Okay, so we've removed all the nipples from the cylinder, and I've chucked them into this plastic cup. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spray that cup with some ballastol and water mixture and let that sit. And I'm going to spray down this entire assembly. also with a ballastol and water mixture and I'm going to let that set. And you can see there's a lot of spraying going on here. Well, to clean the barrel assembly first thing we're going to do is give a fr fresh uh, wipe, fast wipe, to the outside of, of the uh, major components here. I want to just try to get all the bad juju off of here. Gonna get the kind of any schmutz gone. We'll give that another good going over in a, in a minute. And then I'm gonna take a patch and I'm gonna squirt that with ballastol and water. Pull a plug out of here. We'll drain out some of that crud. And I'm gonna put that patch on. I'm gonna run it through with a 375 inch jag. So that's going to be tight, but that's what we want. You can see all the junk that came out of there. And we can see we got a pretty clean bore now. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to send a dry one through. I want a good tight fit, and and that's what we're getting. Wanted a good tight fit, and that's what we're getting. So we got a nice clean bore. So I'm gonna take this grungy, disgusting piece of paper, and I'm gonna throw that away right in the trash. And I'm just gonna take out a new one, lay it down. And I'm gonna work on this. So what I want to do now is get 
the assembly back together. So I'm going to go into the plunger hole right, with the actual rammer, line up my screw hole, he said as he tried to line it up, looking at the camera. Come on, screws. There we go. Oops, grab the right screwdriver, Mike. Here it is. All right, so we'll just put that assembly together. And we're good. All right, and we're happy with the bore. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one more patch. I'm gonna take some pure ballastol, which is a great rust preventative. And I'm gonna run that down. And I'm just going to let that sit for a little while because the ballast oil will actually get into the pores of the metal and that's what I want it to do. And I'll wipe down the outside with a little bit of ballast oil. And I'm just going to let that sit. And while that's sitting, we're going to work on the cylinder. All right, to clean the cylinder, I always start off with Q-tips going right inside the nipples and nipple guards here, the nipple shields, and just giving that a good go around. So we'll do that for all six chambers. All right, now we're going to clean out the, uh, the chambers in the cylinder. And to do that, I changed jags from a 375 jag to a 357 jag because I really want to get down into the bottoms of these things. Uh, now I sprayed a patch with ballast oil and water, and I'm just going to go in and, and clean them out. <laughs> Pretty simple. Now the reason we use ballast oil and water, and why you don't want to use REM oil or, or most other gun oils to clean this, is ballast oil, which is a great oil, is water soluble. And to be honest with you, it's not the oil, it's the water that actually does the cleaning. The water neutralizes the salts in black powder fouling and that's what causes corrosion. So just using pure oil, like I could use pure ballast oil, or I could use pure croil, and it would clean pretty well, but it would not neutralize those black powder salts. And uh, you can still get corrosion in there. So that's why the old timers, and lots of people today, still use hot soapy water instead of a mixture like ballast oil. But I've always found ballast oil or or even its predecessors here in this country, uh, water-soluble machinist oil, which I've used quite a bit of. Uh, I like that because it leaves a, a thin microscopic film of oil inside the pores of the metal. And I'm just going to dry these things out. Uh, and I'm going to do this a couple of times. But that microscopic film of oil will keep these, uh, keep these from rusting. So let me do all the chambers and just get them cleaned out. Once the chambers are all cleaned and dried, the next step is to replace the nipples on the cylinder. And I cleaned the nipples off camera because that really is a tedious job. Uh, at least it is the way I do it. It requires liberal use of a toothbrush soaked in ballast oil and water and then patches until everything is clean. It's just it's a pain in the butt, but you gotta do it. And the beauty of these stainless steel nipples and these, these are these slick shot nipples that have these vent holes in the side and they're working out very well I've got to say. But with stainless steel nipples you really see the fouling so it's, it's good and it's bad. I mean you know if you're getting them clean or not so you gotta, you gotta do a good job you embarrass yourself. Now before putting them on I use a grease. This is choke tube lube. Uh, I've used lots of things over the years. I've used pure ballast oil. I've used Phil Wood's uh, bicycle bearing grease. That stuff works fantastic, by the way. All right, but uh, you want basically to be putting an anti-seize layer on this. 
you can put them in dry but if you've got any moisture left at all in there and it rusts and these things get stuck in your your cylinder you'll be having a heck of a time later so believe me this little step of greasing them it is well worth it and then you just line them up always easier said than done and screw them in all right so we'll put in all six and then that'll be done apples are on the last little step for me is to go through each one with a Q-tip and just uh, make sure no grease is intruded into the into the chamber. And by the way, if you've uh, not had the pleasure of disassembling and reassembling a gun while hugging a tripod and looking through a viewfinder, man, you're missing out on one of life's really unique experiences. The simplest tasks between become incredibly difficult. Okay, so you can see we can see right through the flash holes on each of those nipples. That's exactly what we want. So we are done with the cylinder. Time to get the action back together. All right, that ends part one. In the next episode, we'll take the action apart and clean everything and reassemble the gun.